Okay, final segment of the uh, this, uh, covered bridge scene. I just started uh, applying some of the uh, the alcohol-based um, pen marks to the uh, scene. Just kind of going in with these really fine uh, tipped and uh, light tones, light values to you know get into some. You know, a lot more specific areas of the uh, scene and objects, I guess you can say. And of course, pens are going to be much more conducive to specifics as opposed to the, uh, you know, uh, sponge tipped uh, applicator. And again, uh, if you didn't watch the, uh, the last video, I was saying that uh, alcohol based pens shouldn't uh, blur any of the, uh, the other tones that you've already laid out in the form of dye-based inks. Uh, this is the first time I've used these pens before. I don't even have any other... Uh, no, it's, and actually, I did have some uh, alcohol-based pens way back when uh, put out by this other company called the Graphic Marker Company. They, I don't know, and I don't know what happened to them. But, uh, anyways, um, I'm going in to these shadow areas and just deepening the shadows a little bit, you know, and a little bit, you know, is is right because the uh, this value is very light. But uh, again, just like in my, uh, just like how I do with the, uh, you know, the toning of the scene, I'm just kind of starting off light, because I can always work darker, right? You know, and that way we won't have to go into kind of a, you know, real precarious uh, exercise of, a, you know, color application and shading if we start kind of in lighter tones. That was this real light uh, gray. I don't even know if the uh, colors are mentioned on here. But anyways, here's a, here's a couple of violet tones. Um, let's check that out. You know, purple mountains. And we'll, that'll be kind of a nice touch to the uh, mountain, maybe. Why not bring some of that down here into the uh, the grass as well? You know, I'm not looking for purple grass or something like that, but I'm just bringing, you know, some of the uh, some uh, common colors throughout the scene. And with such a light value, it's not as if it's going to look like it's a, you know, purple grass or anything like that. This one right here is a bit more of a pinkish uh, red in there, you know, so try it in the shadows first and see if you like it, and then you can always add more. The theory between, you know, with uh, these colors being run through the scene is, uh, you know, if there's some colored light or something, or lights kind of making uh, these distant mountains look a certain way, that same light is probably falling on uh, the rest of the scene somewhere. Okay. You can put a little bit on this rock right here, and that'll bring a little bit of a, you know, a, a bit of a relation between that rock and the, uh, the background. Okay, let me see here brighter green, sometimes the brightest colors. I'm not talking about the lightest, but the brightest in terms of the most intensity. The brightest colors are often found in the shadows because where light is really hitting certain areas, it might be washing out the colors a little bit. I don't like these harsh lines, so the thing about alcohol inks is that they kind of go back into solution if you kind of blend them out with another pen. In this case, I'm going back to a lighter pen and moving that color around a little bit. And it's kind of 
blend that little road in a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, let me see something. I was thinking about. I was thinking about possibly um, adding in another element to the scene in the form of a one of the new fences. And why not give it a try? I think I'm going to be covering up that uh, rock. Well, let me see. Do I want that in there? And let's give it a try. And, you know, the worst that can happen is I don't really like it, and you know, so be it. Kind of joke in my classes, you know. Someone's kind of trying to decide on something to do. I, and, but they don't know if they want to take a chance. As I say, well, you know, the worst that can happen is you'll be utterly devastated, right? <laughs> and that's about right, you know. I mean, it's always, uh, I always say, just go for it, you know, and see if you like it, you know, because what's going to happen? You don't like the co you don't like that element within the composition, and. You know, just do another scene. It won't be the last scene we ever do. Okay. I'm doing this in black. Okay. Yeah, looks pretty good. Let's let's kind of even out that uh, composition with another uh, similar element, which is um, the opposing fence. Yeah, that fence right there looks a little stark. And, you know, that's going to be a perfect uh, place to uh, use additional brown tones from the uh, the alcohol inks. You can use your Copic marker. And let's add this on the other side right here. And we'll create... You know, I inked up a lot of that fence, but I certainly didn't need to because I'm just using a small portion of it. Oops. And I just realized that you couldn't see that, and I should have kept it up there. But anyway, so there's a little bit of a fence, you know, creating a, a lead-in into the scene. Okay. And as that one dries all, hopefully this ink here is dry enough. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit wet. So let's wait till that dries a little bit. And uh, let's go in and add some uh, flourishes into the scene in the form of you know, my favorite white gel pen. Um, some of you have asked about this, uh, the gel pens that I'm using. Um, this one happens to be a Pilot Chews, and it says 07. Uh, I'm guessing Pilot's the brand. And the shoes, I'm guessing, is the model, and the 07 is probably the the, the thickness of the uh, um, tip or the the point. Okay, now what I'm doing right here is I'm going into the scene and I'm adding some little. Uh, let me see if I can get that in there. Okay, I'm going in a little bit too close. Okay, right there. And I'm taking a look at some of these bushes, and I'm adding some highlights on the top of them. They can also represent kind of little flowers, little, what do they call it? Pearly everlasting or something like that. Little white flowers growing in, you know, a spring field. And just like in a area in the sky, if this represents something like, um... Oh, I don't know, um, stars or something like that in the night sky. This can represent, uh, you know, little highlights. It does the same type of texture, um, but it represents something different, I guess. There's little, little rocks down here, and what I'm doing is I'm putting little highlights on the top of it, hopefully making them look more dimensional. And again, it's just kind of an excuse for some visual and texture uh, that's really great for contrast and in this water area I'm putting some little 
highlights in the water. I'm just capturing some of that light. Another great place to add this would be maybe on these peaks where I've added tone for um, the shadows. Why don't we add, you know, highlights for light? Uh, okay. And I can see these areas where they're um, a little bit lighter. Why not go in and reiterate that now? with some additional um, texture and lighting because I did go over, it's very faint, but I did go over those areas with a uh, tone, so I'm just being able, I'm pulling out certain little areas in there. Okay. There's a lot of light on this one uh, where I didn't put any color, so let's really uh, push that idea. This area down here is really light, so why not bring in some more of that lighter element in the form of these dots. Um, now that uh, covered bridge is Kind of a subject matter, so why don't we pull some of the, the shapes of the uh, mill out from the background. Here's a little fence that's down there. It kind of gets lost a little bit in the tone. There's really no way of working around that fence when we're doing the coloring, so we can always pull it out later with the use of this. Um, little pebbles on the road texture. Hmm, in the trees? back here. Need a little something. Um, I find the scenes are need to come alive at this point in time, you know. Um, that's when sometimes it's the uh, it's little finishing touches that kind of now bring everything together. All right. Okay. Let me see if I can get through this real fast. Let me do about one minute. I'm just gonna go until this camera shuts off, so bear with me in terms of the uh, the lack of any type of video, uh, you know, uh, editing or production. But again, it, it does allow me to get more uh, content in without having to worry about all that right now. Okay, adding in some uh, mist and fog into the background. And, and again, it's, you know, it's an excuse for some additional texture. Um, you know, maybe create a little bit of a separation between uh, kind of the uh, the trees and the uh, the mountain in the distance. And I'm going over the trees a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit of a lighting or fog, or it could just be softer lighting hitting the uh, trees back there, uh, creating some variation in terms of. Uh, uh, visual textures, soft against crisp. And again, this is a white pigment ink, so it's doing a, a light against dark, so we're working value, texture, uh, depth in terms of uh, 
you know, creating space in between things. Here's the grass and the trees. And by putting this little bit of a foggy looking texture down there, what you're doing is creating a little bit of a separation of uh, between that grass and the trees. It's putting something, it's having some suspended uh, um, vapor between the objects and having uh, light hitting them, making the vapor visible. And okay, let's see if we can get in here really fast before this video shuts down, going in and coloring these uh, fences a little bit. Just to bring them out in the background. There's a kind of a medium brown. Here's a little bit of variation here. So again, it's 